Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Moretz. the pips, the players, the hustlers, the people that bust them, and everybody else in between the Twisted Tuesday has begun, and it's been a wild day so far, and we're not done yet. We've got basketball, we've got hockey, and we've got the Sweet 16. We've got March Madness, women's and the men's. The numbers are in. Caitlin Clark uh, and the Iowa Hawkeye women's game last night, 4.9 million viewers. Absolutely dominant uh, television performance and uh, even beat Monday Night Raw, which Monday Night Raw is perennially the um, highest rated show on television on Monday nights with the exception of Monday Night Football. Um, So we got a lot of stuff to break down. Speaking of football, the NFL is getting crazy and kind of stupid, to be honest. Listen, I don't care where you play the games. You want to play in Brazil, you want to play in Spain, you want to play in Buffalo, whatever. All right? Um, But you know, they've eliminated the onside kick. You can only do an onside kick now in the fourth quarter of a game if you're trailing in the game, and you have to tell everybody that you're about to do an onside kick. That's like having to tell everybody that you want to steal the base on the next pitch, which let's not give these clowns any ideas, all right? But, like, imagine having, like, having to report, yeah, you know, we're going to try to surprise you right now. I mean, why don't we just ask bank robbers to call the bank and tell them what time they want to rob the bank at? Like, seriously? So, okay, that's the one thing. And now we've gone with the XFL kickoff rules, which I don't know. I guess I could try to read them, like, word uh, word by word for you. Look at the video of it. It's a convoluted mess that, like, aesthetically looks stupid. You have everybody all lined up and, and all this. And I don't know. You know, if you look, they they think that it's going to lead to some, like, massive excitement or something like that. There was one kickoff return for a touchdown last year in the XFL. There's nowhere to go. There's no room, right? Like, you can't get, like, a running, you know, you know, the receivers can't really get a running start too much because the defenders are so close to them. It's almost like an extended running play, really. <laughs> like, that's what it is. It's sort of like, all right, we're going to pitch the ball back to you, like, 10 yards back and then you're going to have to deal with all these dudes that are standing right there in a wall. Somebody will break through every once in a while, I guess, whatever. You know, at this point, just eliminate the damn kickoff as a whole and just give the ball to the teams on the 25 yard line. All right. Nobody cares about the kickoffs anymore. Anyways, a shout out to everybody joining us on Sirius XM channel one, five, nine. This is sports rage. I am a So we got a good NBA game tonight, which that's not something that you say very often, to be honest, let's just be real. Right? Like, you know, and listen, I can't wait for the NBA playoffs. The NBA playoffs are going to be sick, but the regular season sucks. Let's just call it out for what it is. It's terrible. It sucks. Every damn game, every night, nobody plays. And I'm not even blaming them for low management stuff. They need to adjust their schedule, man. All right? They need to adjust their schedule. NBA players are not soft. It's not a byproduct of all their soft and stuff. If you're seven feet and you're 210 pounds and you're built like a giraffe, your knees are going to give out, man. Right? Like, that, that, that basketball players get hurt more. Like, people, all oh, hockey players are so tough and stuff like this. Right? And and all and hockey players are tough. Right? But hockey players also aren't, like, 7'4 and 220 pounds. Right? Like, they don't face the same type of injuries, especially the wear and tear on the knees, man. Right? Like, it's up to the NBA and their schedule. Like, you can, like, find, like, and, you know, low management was out of control. But you can find teams and all this. Well, I don't know. How about you don't have teams playing like five games in eight nights, Mr. Silver? How's that sound? Right? Like, I don't know. Shorten the season. Make the season longer. Whatever. You want to shorten games? Shorten games. You want to make it longer so they don't have to play all the time and we'll get a better product, then that'll be better. A lot of stuff. A uh, lot, lot, lot of rage tonight. A lot of stuff. Jordan Montgomery has signed a one-year deal uh, with the Arizona Diamondbacks, nearly, and I was thinking Arizona. When I hear Arizona, I think Wildcats. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, if you did word association, Arizona, Wildcats. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I had to have a baseball's back, right? Like, we got to get in a baseball form. The D-backs, the Diamondbacks. Somewhat of a surprise uh, here. The D-backs step up and in. This is a competitive division. Everybody else in this division isn't just rolling over for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Speaking of which, Pete Rose said that if you only had an interpreter, he would be off the hook. Well, not quite, Pete, right? <laughs> not, 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 not quite. 
Otani wasn't calling bets in from the dugout, bro. All right. Like uh, on, 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 you know, on the Cincinnati Reds. But I digress, Pete. I and mean, listen, you know, whatever. And I've said it before, too. Pete Rose gambling is like the least of the worst things that this guy's done. All right. Like, trust me. Like, I used to be on that big, you know, in the Hall of Fame as a joke without Pete Rose. There's no way in hell I'm dying on that hill now. <laughs> you know, like, I took a step back, and I'm like, hey, you know what? They're actually right about this. Like, let's, let's just be real. But nevertheless, you know, make up your own mind. And I'm, I'm not even going to get into it. It's sordid. All right? It's, it's, it's sordid. So we got college basketball tonight, NFL football. They're changing rules. Trey White, Buffalo Bill, signs with the Los Angeles Rams. One-year deal, $8.5 million. Uh, could be uh, upwards of 10 mil. A busy night tonight in the National Hockey League. Edmonton Oilers and the Winnipeg Jets going on it right now in Winnipeg. 2-1 for the Oil. Uh, NBA basketball, we got a good one going on. 107-107, Oklahoma City Thunder and the Pelicans. In-game total right now is 238.5. There's a little under five minutes remaining in the game, so they're at 214. And the game is essentially a pick em, uh right now in a tie basketball game. The Mavericks... And the uh, Kings have already tipped off. They didn't waste any time here uh, tonight. Sacramento are already off to a 5 nothing start right now. The total is 230 and a half. Every Sacramento game is dramatic and crazy. They should be in the uh, in Sweet 16 of March Madness because they like drama, uh, the Sacramento Kings. I, you know, I look at this game. I don't really want to get in front of Luka Doncic right now. I don't really want to get in front of Kyrie Irving. I don't want to get in front of the Dallas Mavericks 7-3. I do think there's going to be points put up on the board uh, in this game. NHL hockey, uh, we've got the um, the trash bin specials here in the late night hours. You ready for some Anaheim Duck and Seattle Kraken hockey? I'm not. You ready for some Columbus Blue Jackets and the Coyotes? <laughs> I, I guarantee you that parking your car will cost more than it would to get into this Blue Jacket and Coyote game. Like, if you ask, like, the fathers to go on a road trip, they'd say, like, really? No, like, I don't want to come, son. <laughs> like, like, I don't, I, I, like, I don't, I don't want to come. Although Arizona is cool, but this game blows. Uh, the club is Blue Jackets and the Arizona Coyotes. Dallas Stars and the Sharks uh, coming up a little bit later on. Andrew McKinnis will step up and then we'll talk pucks. Frozen Four. We're in a college mood, man. We're going to get to the Sweet 16. We've got the Frozen Four, the NCAA Ice Hockey Tournament. That's set to begin. We'll go over the teams and sort of get you set up uh, for this. McKinnis loves to bet on the pucks. The Ranger Redhead Cam Stewart in the house. Griffin Murphy kicks it with us. Um, first time since he's been on the show since uh, he joined us at the MGM um, at the Super Bowl. Uh, we got Keeve O'Neill in the house. We'll talk Sweet 16 and uh, UFC Atlantic City. Is, this is the only town that the UFC fighters will have to be worried about getting beat up and robbed in the parking lot. This is Sports Rage. They go into the Pac-12 tournament, they win it, then they go into the NCAAs, and they put up a bucket load of points. They have looked fantastic. That's not the team that I saw in the regular season. All those people that had all that extra time because of those COVID seasons is going to be gone, and you're not going to really have the 23, 24, 25-year-old basketball players running around anymore. You're not going to have it. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The books have so much information. Now, the, the gamblers do as well, but it's coming down to sometimes coaching, sometimes, you know, a, a good play, a good call. I mean, the block last night that was a block, it was called a foul. Oh, oh my, God. my God. That was Dude, all We would ball. see that highlight forever. Yes. 
And oh, instead, we, they, they got were, robbed. We'll, we'll never see it again. We got, got robbed by a referee making, you know, that's a ref. They in, still covered, though. They did. They did cover. The Bostonian versus the book. I think JMU is going to knock off Wisconsin. I think JMU, with the way that they can score the ball and spread you out, Wisconsin struggles to defend. They're in the bottom third in defensive efficiency. Iowa State's not going to beat you with offense necessarily. They're just they're just not. Illinois will beat you with offense. I like Illinois. I don't love them enough to beat UConn. you got to guard at some point. Give me Connecticut to make the Final Four. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All we've heard you say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game, live, all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka high. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game, live, prime time. Back-to-back, just utterly stinker quarters. In-game, live, overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Marenzi, the pistol players, the hustlers, the people that bust them, and everybody else in between so we've been in such a big college basketball uh, mode but we do have a cool nba game that just tipped off and of course the the thunder and the pels are playing 112 107 right now for the pelicans with two and a half minutes left uh the kings and mavericks 15 11 right now the 649 mark of the first quarter in game total is 234 and a half mavericks getting a point and a half in this game and the bucks and lakers are tied in overtime so it's a competitive night tonight in the association uh, meanwhile, in the NHL, the Oilers have just taken a 3-1 lead on the Jets. The Predators have a 17-point game win streak uh, going 15-0-2 in their last 17 games, but they're losing 4-2 to the Vegas Golden Knights right now. Blackhawks up 2-0. Canadians up 2-1 on the Avalanche as big underdogs uh, this evening. And we had a full slate of games earlier tonight. Cam Stewart in the house. And uh, Cam... I said earlier that it would cost more to park at the Arizona Coyote Columbus Blue Jacket game than it would cost to get into the game. Yeah. And I did not bet this, have zero interest in this game, but I know you did bet this mm-hmm. game. Who do you have? Of course you know I did, Gabe. I bet the, the three worst games of the card. This is what we're here late night for. I'll tell you, Gabe. So imagine you at the book and I walk up to you and say, Sir, here's my tickets tonight. San Jose Sharks plus two and a half on FanDuel. I got them. I'm laying that against Dallas. I also am going to take the one and a half. I like the Columbus Blue Jackets as dogs and Anaheim. All three dogs in the National Hockey League tonight. That's a bad card. And I got Sacramento I'll give you some drink tickets. That's what I would yeah, do thanks. if you came That's up to me. That's what Dave Sherapan told me. He goes, You're, he goes, those picks are so bad, I'm going to give you a free steak. I go, Excellent. No, no, no steak, no steak. But I'd be like, uh, here's for the yeah. If you played these three games, I'd give you like you know, I, I, you know, depends on what you bet. It's kind of the standard is a ticket for a hundred bucks now. Yeah, but right. Me? It's some of the better. Well, they're more gratuitous places. That's kind of like yeah. they're being nice. Like, <laughs> but see, I'd give you like I'd give you like five six drink tickets, Cam. And I'd be like, I tell someone after you walk away, I'd say this guy like. Uh, He's gonna yeah. need these drink tickets. He just yeah, you know, he, right. bet, he just bet on these three teams. <laughs> I got a I got so a jersey with, need these. <laughs> with lemon on the back. Hey, what what lemon yeah. Larry Lemon bet? The Sharks, the Jackets, and the Ducks. I'm on the Canadians so guy, tonight too. McKinnis's team. I'm not laying that juice with Colorado. No way, Gabe. Just Montreal's playing great. They beat the crack in the last game. I was on them. They murdered them. These are the spots for the Montreal Canadiens. I think they could win this hockey game. I got them plus one and a half too. I'll say Cam's got more lemons than a farmer in Salinas. <laughs> I really do. I, I, I'm citrus fruits personified. <laughs> <laughs> 
a bag of lemons. You should, like, imagine walking up to the window. Who do you like tonight? Montreal, Canadian, sharks, ducks, jackets. Like, oh, man, you're on. What drugs are you on, bro? That's me. <laughs> you know the game that, uh, speaking of drugs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, good, good segue. Excellent. Yeah, speak, speaking <laughs> of drugs. Yeah, I feel like I need some drugs and or Jack Edwards is on drugs. Oh, I don't know yeah. what was worse, losing money on that game or like having like, I did mute it a few times, but it was Bob was like, ah, just I'd rather hear it and stuff. But I like, I don't want to be a jerk because I don't want to find out that the guy's ill or something like that. Yeah. Right. But I people know. are saying he's not. They're like, no, it's not a health issue or anything like that. But oh, he's, he's like 15, like it's just the word salad and pastor neck. And I don't, yep. I don't never heard the term either, scoops the puck. Let's bring in McInnes yeah. before. Well, instead of saying dump it in, McInnes, like they dumped it in the zone where he goes and he scoops it. Scoops what? Like, what, ice cream? <laughs> like, I don't, like, I, just, these hockey Gabe, terms of these guys the that they come up with sometimes. Up glass. He gets, just say it, hit he, off the glass. What do you mean, up yeah. glass? Like, up ice. Yeah. I know All this yeah. stuff. And, I, you know, yeah, Pierre yeah, yeah, Maguire yeah. started this one, and it drove me crazy years ago, too. Remember, Cam? The wall. No, what do you mean, boards. the boards? Yeah, yeah boards. the boards, boards, you mean? Boards? The, wall. the wall. The wall. They the dropped wall the wall a little China. bit. The wall was a yeah, buzzword yeah, for years. Yeah, not wall, around yeah, as much anymore. Wall. I helped yeah. stop yeah. that out. The wall yeah, sucked. Walls, <laughs> <country. laughs> walls are for countries. Boards are for hockey, you jerk. And Edwards, I'm a guy who drinks two rounds. I'm not going to accuse the guy, but yet sloppier of every by one period. In the third period, I can't even understand what the hell he's talking about. Pastor, I hate the brew. Now, Pastor Nack, Charlie Coyle. I'm just sitting there going, what the <laughs> hell's going on with this guy? Like, just drool. The I wish he was drinking in the NHL. It really is. I wish he was drinking. It's more like sleeping pills, guys. He's not drinking. If he was drinking, it would make me laugh a little bit more, at least. Uh, he yeah. takes him about 10 minutes to say a whole sentence. I can go right. get a beer from the fridge, make a sandwich. <laughs> the puck has moved down the ice for the Boston <laughs> Bruins. It takes forever to take one sentence out of him. People there was one sequence guy, where too, Gabe. Offended. there was like, action like in the crease. There was action in the crease. It did nothing happen. Then, like, the puck got cleared to the other end. And as the puck's getting cleared to the other end, and a dangerous opportunity in front. I'm like, <laughs> that was like 13 seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, like, you know, know like, really, 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 really good hockey play-by-play guys, you don't have to watch. I swear to God. Like, you don't, you don't, like, you can be on TV. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like Bob Cole. You know, Chris Cuthbert, you know, right? I grew up on Dick Irvin, right? On the radio, right? Like, he didn't, like, wasn't that like, oh, my God, and he's in it. It was, you know, it was a buildup. And sometimes, you know what I mean? You're cleaning up the house. You got a hockey game on, Cam. You can tell by the play-by-play guy what's going on. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's kind of dangerous. Oh, something's about to happen now. With Jack, like, you're just, like, you have no idea what's going on. Like, if you just said, all right, just listen to the audio of this and try to follow this game, you'd have no clue what's going on, bro. Like, you can't visualize where the puck is on the ice. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know what I'm getting with this guy either. Like, it's all over the place. Like, some guys, and he dumps it down the left side, down the left wing, into the corner. Like, this guy's just like, and he scoops it, and there's, you know what I mean, Reinhardt. I'm like, dear, man. That was hard. And then I lost late because the Panthers choked McKinnis. Yeah, they did. I got to tell you right now, McKinnis and Kim, the, only winner I the had Panthers, all night. that's what they're going to do in the playoffs. The Panthers gonna are going to run out of gas. They're not the team that everyone thinks they are. Interesting. Well, I, I'll i tell you what. I think the Leafs would rather play the Bruins than the Panthers because, you know, there's only a few guys that are making back to the Leafs, huh? Yeah, no, yeah well, I don't even want to talk about the Leafs. I don't even want to talk about the Panthers after tonight. The Devils well, beat them all. Like, what are these well, Gabe, that, that, that was the biggest. That's what that game was all about. That was a four-point game in the Atlantic Division. That game yep. pretty much decided who was going to meet in the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs in the Eastern Conference. So that's why it's relevant. And I personally believe that they would have it better. This isn't. This isn't Andrew knocking the Leafs. This is me talking about the matchups now because of that victory for the uh, for the Bruins. They just got themselves a one-way ticket out of Leaf Town, and and the Panthers just booked themselves a ticket into uh, Scotiabank Arena. That that's why I brought it up, you know. And in my opinion, yeah, if you're if you're the Bruins, I think you would rather, you know, uh, go ahead and and probably escape that. You, nobody wants to play the Panthers, I don't think, Gabe. But I think that the Bruins matched up worse 
uh, against the Leafs than the Leafs would match up now against the Panthers. That's just my opinion. I agree. I'm not sure if anyone's a good matchup for the Leafs. I, that's 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 basically the moral of the story. The Leafs. And I'm not. Like, it's not. I don't mean negative on them, but like it's you know what I mean. They have so little success. It doesn't matter. You know it's what? almost like well, whatever, man. Like if we play Tampa, they've always beaten us. We play Florida, they've beaten us. We play Boston, they always beat us. Like if yeah, you're the Leafs, the they school, all beat you. With the old school standings, I think that that they could. I think they could beat the Metro teams. I think that you look at the Metro division. Yeah. I think that you could see it's Toronto against Carolina. They're getting look at the sabotaged. Old school. It's, been <laughs> well, really it's been sabotaged. six months. It's been six months. It's been Boston or Florida. Too. It's sabotaged. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you one thing though. This is the year, and everybody's so down. There's like confidence level minus. Like it's it's a negative. They're ripping this team so hard. You know what? I have no exactly. expectations into the playoffs. Maybe, yeah. If they get swept, who cares? I expect it. it. I can't wait. Can't wait. Looking forward to the playoffs. <laughs> yes. Me too. I'm looking forward to the disappointment. I'm with those lightning, Gabe. No one's talking about yeah, them. They're so like, hot. what, 25 to 1? The they're lightning hot. are they, just make the playoffs. That's all they care about. Just get in. Just get in. Yeah. Yeah, once the playoffs start, they're gonna be there. They're another one that like no one's easy. Same with the Vancouver Canucks guys. As good as the Canucks season is, like oh god, you gotta play like the Vegas Golden Knights or the LA Kings. Like either way, it sucks. They have looked fantastic. That's not the team that I saw in the regular season. All those people that had all that extra time because of those COVID seasons is going to be gone, and you're not going to really have the 23, 24, 25-year-old basketball players running around anymore. You're not going to have it. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. The books have so much information. Now, the, the gamblers do as well, but it's coming down to sometimes coaching, sometimes, you know, a, a good play, a good call. I mean, the block last night that was a block, it was called a foul. Oh, oh my God. My God. That was Dude, all We would ball. see that highlight forever. Yes. And oh, instead, we, we, we got we, robbed. We'll, we'll never see it again. Got, got robbed by a referee making, you know, that's a rep. In, they still covered, though. They did. They did cover. The Bostonian versus the book. I think JMU is going to knock off Wisconsin. I think JMU, with the way that they can score the ball and spread you out, Wisconsin struggles to defend. They're in the bottom third in defensive efficiency. Iowa State's not going to beat you with offense necessarily. They're just they're just not. Illinois will beat you with offense. I like Illinois. I don't love them enough to beat you, Kyle. you got to guard at some point. Give me Connecticut to make the Final Four. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart Team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen and watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Well, the Winnipeg Jets were down 3-1 to the Edmonton Oilers, and just like that, it's 3-3 right now. And I'm out of luck because I had under six, and it was looking great. It was one of these games, man. 0-0 after the first period of play. I should have cashed out, Cam. Should have yeah. just, ca- you know, I don't know. I, I would I, I, I wouldn't really do that. Do that. <laughs> but, I, I, I hate the cash but it was 2-1 two two after 20, 0-0, two, uh, zero, zero, and then 2-1 after 40, and then boom, Edmonton collapses late too. Ooh, the mighty Edmonton Oilers that everybody wants to anoint the Stanley Cup champions uh, right now. Back, I think it's 4-3 now. I bet, bet them live. They were down 3-0 to Vegas. They're coming back. 4-3. Six minutes left. Yeah. And we're Come running on, out of real estate though. Six and a half yeah. minutes left. Yeah, never over. McKinnis? Who are you on in a late night uh, trash heap games? One nothing cracking right now, actually, over the Ducks. Mm-hmm. Scoreless in the Blue Jackets and Coyotes. Any uh, thoughts on these games? I'm rooting on the the Doan kid for Arizona. I've got the under in that game, so I'm hoping there's absolutely nothing going on in that one. Look, it's kind of funny because the early half of the NHL slate, we had playoff implications, we had good games, good teams, and then the second half is just absolute trash that nobody wants to get involved in. So what I've decided to do is just bet the unders. I told you a couple weeks ago, Gabe, I I wish I was here last week with you guys. And Cam keeps doing it with the Sharks. I will no longer play a side in Shark games on Tuesday That's nights. Score, Tuesday guys. nights, I can't <laughs> fade the Sharks. I'm on the under. I'm on the under. Oh, did they just score? Oh, yeah, they're coming back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, Kim, but, 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 but Vegas always does this to us and beats us in overtime uh, or something. I'm going to tell you, Marenzi. <laughs> I'm going to become a Predators fan and get a Preds jersey. Screw the Leafs. The Preds are the team that, like, they at least help me in my life. I like, yeah, like he I said it. Screw the Leafs. Yeah, I want to be a Predators guy. They, at least they're Can nice. Like, yes. Every, every Jump year on the Vancouver bandwagon. Too. Canuck bandwagon. There you go. That's February, true. March, the Predators yep. come alive every time. Yep. This time of year. They do. they do. I like the Canucks jerseys, though. I'm, I'm cheering for the, them, Gabe. I hope they do well. I really like uh, I like their team a lot. I, I, want, I want. Here's the deal. I want some Canadian team to do well this year, and I usually don't play that card. I'm sick and tired of this country, like, gagging. Like, look at our teams. It's it, Enough is enough here. Like, one, someone, somebody has to step up and go deep. Like, uh, every year, it's the same old story, man. I'm getting sick of it. I'll actually cheer for teams I don't even care about. We need a representative, man. It's enough. Like, come on, Gabe. What was the last time you you had hair? You're selling beer on the side of a street for the Montreal Canadians parade? <laughs> the <laughs> deck is play. stacked. Yeah. Yeah, that stacked. was the last time. That was a yeah. long time ago. 30 years ago. The deck, the Cam, deck is I'll stacked. I'll cheer for the Leafs, man. I'll cheer for them, just so you know. You I, I, th- I thought about that yesterday. I thought you about that think. yesterday. I don't usually yeah. like bringing the country argument into things. That we're all our own teams or whatever. I'm sick and tired of it, too. Three of my best friends are Leaf fans. I'm going to cheer for them this year. If they, you know what? Uh, I'm sick and tired of Florida. I'm sick and tired of some of these teams. Their fan bases are nothing. You know, this is the thing. This is the passion here. I, I want to see it. I want to see it come back. But what I'm scared of with Vancouver, Gabe, I was happy you didn't see my tweet last night. It was every team has to go through it. They were so bad last year, and they turn it around so fast. I feel like every team has to go through the ringer. You know, remember when Tampa got swept by Columbus in, in the bubble? You know, everyone thought that was the year for them. That's my biggest worry with Vancouver this year is that they they just surprised everyone too much. It's almost too good to be true for them to just go all the way this year. It's too good. It's You had a good regular season, but you got to get to the postseason and mess up first, then come back next year. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I don't – I don't. you know what I mean? I don't think that – I think that there's other teams. I think this, the experience in the Vegas Golden Knights – Obviously, they're the defending uh, Stanley Cup champions. The Colorado Avalanche are another team. I mean, you have to understand, guys. Everybody knows. You two know. But other teams are going to step it up in the playoffs. Big time. Suddenly, Colorado will be better. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, suddenly Vegas will be better. Right? Like, Vegas have been looking at the big picture. Like, Nashville won't be easy in the playoffs. But one thing I will say, and I totally agree with you, McKinnis, we don't fully know, but I do like – how Vancouver is learning to play and win in low-scoring games, if you'll notice. Mm -hmm. They don't win them all. They lost 3-2 the other night to the Kings, but they've won a lot of 2-1 games, 3-2 games. They have learned to play playoff hockey. It was an adjustment for them as, you know, about a month ago out of the All-Star break. Teams were tightening up on them a little bit. You and I have talked a lot about their high scoring percentage on limited amount of shots on goal. It's harder to get pucks through the, to, to the goal now. Teams are blocking shots. Everybody's tightening up defensively. 
But I do think that they can match up with anybody, right? Like, you know, if they played the Colorado Avalanche, I'd have to say the Avs beat them. Like, I'm not I'm not naive. Like, let's say they made it to the, you know, the second round or whatnot. I'd say, man, they're going to be in tough here. But at the same point in time, they are super talented, bro, and they are very good. So, like, if they just they play their hockey, either. they don't know if they can just play their hockey, they can take any one seven games. They're going to be in every series, especially you know with Demko coming games? back. I, that's the whole point. And we can, we know hockey compared to other sports. You get a hard remember Demko carried them a few years ago in the bubble. Yeah. He's been hurt since then, right? But he was good in the playoffs when he got to the playoffs. Think about the West, Gabe, yeah. and you talked about that bet too, like taking the West. I think the West is going to oh, beat I love up that each bet. other. No, I actually, I but the reason I, I, I'm not running to the window is I think those teams are so damn good. They're all going to be seven game series, physical and tough. Like these guys just might kick their living crap out of each other. And a team yeah. from an East will, will be healthier getting into That's the Stanley the bet, Cup, guys. as we've seen. Like everyone would talk about yeah. strategies coming in. Do we play every game to go to overtime? Do you take every underdog all the way through like March Madness? That's almost the one, Cam. I'm gonna play like every series over six and a half games. <laughs> I know I, I kind of agree. Long playoffs. Yeah. Long you get playoffs that plus four hundred, whatever. Don't even pick the winner. Go to seven, 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 Go to seven. six or yeah. seven or whatnot. <laughs> I like it. And even though it doesn't sound logical, look at last year, guys. Even in East Camp, Florida, Toronto went seven games. Mm-hmm. Florida, Boston went seven games. Hell, Florida went like how many times in Florida? What about in the in the conference final? How many games did they go? They went. Um... Who'd they play in the conference final? Did they go six? They um, beat the Bruins, the Leafs, and then who do they beat and to get to the cup? They beat, they beat, yeah, they beat the Bruins the in Canes? seven in overtime. The Canes. Was it the Rangers? Or no, no, it wasn't the Rangers. See, nobody remembers oh, who Rangers finishes first. Really the Devils. Devils. Man, wow, who where was, was it? Rain dead here. <laughs> who was it? What? Uh, that's, it was Carolina, wasn't it? It must have been Carolina. I think it was the Canes. I think it was the Canes. I don't remember them beating yeah. the Canes, though, actually, to be honest. I don't remember anything, to be honest with you. I'm really worried about uh, our break. <laughs> it's not funny. I remember good. the first round because they upset Boston, and they came. They won yep. in seven. Beat then the Leafs. Leafs, they were up, and the Leafs came back, yep. and then four to one in seven. Uh, but then after, I'm drawing a blank. Hurricanes. Hurricanes. So what yeah, was the Hurricanes? Hurricanes? They beat the Hurricanes, yeah. huh? Yep, they did. That's I like the strategy, though, me tonight. I do. I do. Yeah, no, there should it's be easy. longer series. How did the Canes lose to the Penguins tonight, McKinnis? Welcome to hockey. What the hell right was now. that about? Well, we talk about what? this stuff, Gabe. Dog City right now, man. Be careful. Man. Man. I don't know what's return. going on with the Penguins defensive masterclass. I mean, uh, even wasn't a good offensive game, but when when the Penguins are shutting you down, something's going on. I'll, all I know is I'll, I'll be betting on Carolina their next game. Secondly, do you guys see that quote from Gensel after the game? He goes, I don't know. I thought I was a part of the plan for the future. I told him I wanted to stay. They had other ideas. And he's been unbelievable ever since he joined Carolina. Like, he nonstop ever since he got there. He's been great. I- I've been saying this in every show I've been on. This is probably the first year in about five years that I haven't, before the season started, made a future on the East and the Cup for the Hurricanes. So, guys, you know, you might as well punch this it in right year. now because this is, this is the first year I haven't I'm done it. So. right now. <laughs> Every year, people hype up the Canes, and I'm like, "You guys are crazy. They're they're okay, yeah. but they're not winning the cup." Now I'm like, "You know what? If I had to pick one team in the East, I'd take the Canes to go to the yep. cup." Yeah, and Gabe, Freddie I told Anderson, you, he's good now. Like, have you seen Freddie Anderson play? Like, the Leafs are like, "Why? Do you, like, did you stay?" Yeah, yeah. And that's you know amazing. what? I know it's not flashy, and I know it's not yep. my Canucks, and we're talking about all these other teams. But I said it the other day, and it kind of rings, Cam and McKinnis, Dallas, Carolina, Stanley Cup. Oh, great. Yeah, that's that's some super. I know, and you know it'll happen because it's it'll just piss off Canada. That's exactly what yeah, we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's totally yeah, like yeah. you got to be kidding me. Like you know, what I mean? Dallas, Dallas and Carolina. We're just, we're just suckers for for hockey. We go in there. Doesn't matter what you feed. That's us, what it'll we'll be. Hit. Too warm that's weather, yeah. football yeah, and yeah. basketball. Like they yeah. care more about North Carolina basketball and the Cowboys. <laughs> they don't <even> care. <laughs> Dallas has gone through some suffering, though. They've got, like, Jamie Ben. No, they, they got good fans. They, they've Dallas, been right? through it. But I, I told you guys a couple months ago, and you laughed at me. And I so said, the Canes. The Canes are hardcore, team, the best team. Those guys are nuts. Yeah, more best Canadian those. team. I said the Jets, you guys. You guys laughed at oh, me no, all loud. Laugh. You guys you you me laugh all right. He said, no, way, no I just took offense. I didn't laugh. Yeah, yeah. No, what did I say? What did I say? I was the one in a minute. I said when I saw Craig Button said, I said, oh, this guy, like, these guys are idiots. 
And then they made their point, and I was like, yeah, the Jets are better than I realized they are. <laughs> exactly. Well, and they made those two pickups. The Foley and Monahan too, have been good. No, they're good, but the Jets. Jets are dangerous, actually. Yeah, but well, they've I'm got the Canadian good. curse, too. They've got the Canadian yeah, yeah. curse. Yeah, you're right. I got the Kings 21 to 1, guys. The Kings are, it's going to be unbelievable. Like any team, I think, that has a chance, like realistically, like it's going to, the West is going to be unbelievable. It's really going to be great. And the thing Canada's is, the West, what he said there, they don't Blood all bath. play each other. They don't all play each other, though. Right? So it looks all crazy. You don't have to play everybody, right? It's just getting to have to play two other, you know what I mean, three teams to get to the cup. A lot of these teams are going to eliminate each other. So, like, who's Edmonton playing in the first round right now? They're in big, I think Edmonton could be in trouble big time. Let me just see the update. They flawed. It seems like Vegas and Vancouver. So it would be Edmonton and L.A., right? It would, yeah, it'd be Edmonton that, and LA. That's a matchup. Right yeah, it'd, 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 it'd be Edmonton, LA. It'd be Edmonton, LA. That is LA. the big well, tough here. bully in the schoolyard. Go, come on, bring it on, Edmonton. That'd be three straight years, dude. That's going seven, bro. That's like that's going seven. Don't mess with the Kings. And the Kings probably beat them. I, I'm not betting on Edmonton. I don't care. That's the Edmonton worst just matchup. Find a way to lose, man. And yeah, they're they like do. the Leafs. Like they'll find a way to lose. I think McKinnis is right. Vancouver and Winnipeg is the best candidate, best chance. Yeah, that's true. They go into the Pac-12 tournament. They win it. Then they go into the NCAAs, and they put up a bucket load of points. They have looked fantastic. That's not the team that I saw in the regular season. All those people that had all that extra time because of those COVID seasons is going to be gone, and you're not going to really have the 23, 24, 25-year-old basketball players running around anymore. You're not going to have it. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. The books have so much information. Now, the, the gamblers do as well, but it's coming down to sometimes coaching, sometimes, you know, a, a good play, a good call. I mean, the block last night that was a block, it was called a foul. Oh, oh my, God. my God. That was Dude, all We would ball. see that highlight forever. Yes. And instead, oh, we, we, we got we, robbed. We'll, we'll never see it again. We got, got robbed by a referee making, you know, that's a ref. In. They still covered, though. They did. They did cover. The Bostonian versus the book. I think JMU is going to knock off Wisconsin. I think JMU, with the way that they can score the ball and spread you out, Wisconsin struggles to defend. They're in the bottom third in defensive efficiency. Iowa State's not going to beat you with offense necessarily. They're just they're just not. Illinois will beat you with offense. I like Illinois. I don't love them enough to beat you, Kyle. you got to guard at some point. Give me Connecticut to make the Final Four. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game, live, all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game, live, prime time. Back-to-back, just utterly stinker quarters. In-game, live, overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
a wild game with the Los Angeles Lakers and the Milwaukee Bucks. There was no LeBron James. And, man, Anthony Davis, it's crazy to say that a guy that's, I don't know, probably made about $300 million is underrated, but Anthony Davis is, like, awesome. <laughs> like, he really is. When this dude plays, man, 34 points, 23 rebounds. Like, that's like, whenever LeBron's not around, AD just says, you know, don't worry, I got this. And they play faster and stuff. My bad for not betting the over of this game. Like, I've been caught up in college and other stuff. And, like, I saw LeBron was out. And I was like, ah, you know, whatever, NBA. <laughs> but it's almost an automatic. Whenever LeBron doesn't play, the Lakers play way faster. LeBron's great, but he slows he slows them down. He walks the ball up the court. When he's not there, they push the ball a lot more. And D'Angelo Russell gets more shots. 29 points for Russell. 29 points for Reeves tonight. I'll tell you what, guys. The Lakers are a dangerous team going into the NBA playoffs. Agreed. We were just talking about like these NHL teams that are veteran teams like Tampa and Vegas, teams that know how to win and have won before. It's hard. They get better. And the NBA, McKinnis, on top of it, Cam, too, and the NBA, I'll throw it to you, Andrew, on this, though. The NHL is more relentless. The NHL, you really are playing every 48 hours, and then you get the travel day, right? The NBA, bro, like, the Lakers will play on Tuesday and then Sunday again. Like, NFL teams play more games in a week than LeBron will in the playoffs. <laughs> true. Like, it's true. CFL teams yep. play three games in nine days. Right. LeBron will play right. two. Like, in the playoffs? <laughs> well, he'll play update. on Sunday, and let's get him back on TV next Saturday. How's that? Like, okay, let's right, get the week off. How's this and LeBron for plays one of those games. Predators down 3 nothing. They came back and beat Vegas. Wow. Five, wow. What a wild night tonight Huge. with the comebacks. We were on it. Good job with the Preds. How Finally. many dogs have won tonight, guys? Uh, I, it, it's, been, it's been a lot of, a lot of madness game tonight. tonight. That game tonight pretty much soldifies Vegas not catching Nashville. That was yeah. another important like sort of standings one. You know what I'm saying? They, I didn't think they were, but I think there were five back coming into tonight. Now they're not coming back on them. Vegas so will be Colorado. the last wild card team. This makes up for all my leaf bets, Gabe. Get, getting that so Nashville, whoever, I went down there three nothing. I could no predators. Colorado so whoever, versus Nashville. Whoever's yeah. the top seed in the in the West will get will get them now. That's you, not, not, not guaranteed. It'll be Vegas. Winnipeg are coming on. All these other teams are coming on. What do you think, Andrew? If you were Vancouver, would you rather play Vegas or Nashville? Nashville. Even though Nashville, Nashville are hot, it's got to be Nashville. You, mean, you, yeah. know, you, know, Nashville, you know what? I don't, Gabe, I don't think the Vancouver Canucks get pushed around. Uh, you know, when I said earlier about their inexperience, I, I think they're still built to be a playoff team. Like, when I watch them, you know, so even their superstars, even guys like Pedersen, I don't think Pedersen's a soft star. I don't think he gets pushed around at all. No, he's so a big dude. I think that you look at the speed difference between those two teams you mentioned, I think that they would be much happier playing Nashville because more of a grinded out game. They've got a big decor. This is the thing. Look at Vancouver's decor, man. They've got like six, three, six, four guys that can handle. I think they can handle physicality. I think it's when they play a team with four lines of speed defense yeah. to jump into the rush that that's going to bother them quite a bit. Let's get into the frozen four guys. I'm looking forward uh, to this and betting each game along the way. We've got some futures. I've got some facts about uh, about each team. Our boy Tommy um, in master control, pulling for uh, RIT cam, Rochester Institute of Technology in the house. The Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs> Pretty impressive that they made it to the, uh, to the Frozen Four into yeah, the right. final Sweet 16. So Boston College... Uh, here, here are the odds just to make the Frozen Four here, guys. So this, so it's called the Frozen Four, but it starts with 16. So to make the final four of the Frozen Four, Boston College is minus 150. Boston University is plus 110. But if you look at their path, we'll get the bracket back up in a second. To me, it looks like Denver have the kind of most manageable path that we can say, yeah, they're going to get there. I think Michigan and Michigan State are on a collision course. Michigan and Michigan State just played for the Big Ten title. Michigan State won in overtime. The Michigan Wolverines are one of the highest scoring teams in the country. They give up goals, though, so they got to tighten up. But I think they can beat uh, North Dakota, and then we got a rematch. I think that Michigan State's going to beat Michigan Tech. Then we're going to get that, that uh, you know, the rivalry game, Michigan-Michigan State, to move on. But I'll tell you what, McKinnis, 
You remember, you watched the World Junior Championships. The goalie on Michigan State, Augustine, was the goalie on the U.S. national team. He's a stud, this kid. That's the thing. When I look at these tournaments, I look at defense, I look at goaltending. You've got all these studs. you got the draft picks. you got the NHL prospects. You know, I, I followed NCAA, you know, during the year a little bit more than I did years prior, guys. I'm not going to kid you and say that I've watched every weekend. But, you know, I think for me, looking at some of these games, you can noticeably see the more the season goes on, the more unders started cashing. I know a few people I talked to on uh, on X that, that bet every weekend with college hockey and the totals. It's very simple for them. Start the year off, they bet the overs. As the season progresses, they bet the unders. And and for me, looking at um, looking at Fowler, the prospect for the Habs for for BC, everyone talks about Cutter Goche and all the great forwards there for them. Fowler's been great. The defensive core on BC has been great. Michigan State, as you mentioned, I, I even think North Dakota though. They've got some weapons as well. I think it's going to be really entertaining. I think we could see some upsets uh, in this tournament. Dude, every one of these teams coming into this tournament is sort of like red hot. Like, it's pretty crazy. Like, you look at Boston College. These guys are a power. Boston College are second in the nation. They average 4.42 goals uh, a game. Um, They've got the best penalty kill. That's what you want to look for, too. They're third in power play scoring, and they're number one in penalty kill. You know, like, if you want to talk about top prospects, they got Will Smith, Ryan Leonard, Gabe Perot, uh, Cutter Gauthier. Like, mm-hmm. these guys are loaded. Like, where's Will yeah. Smith? What, he got drafted by the, uh, was it the Sharks or the Jackets last Jack- year? Sharks. Oh, Sharks. Sharks, 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 Sharks I think. Right. Yeah. Sharks. Yeah. 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 And Ryan Leonard was one well, of the Jackets, yeah. I believe. Actually, that's what it was. Ryan Leonard's the Jackets. And then, uh, like, these guys are big-time players. But he went to the Caps. Yeah, Ooh, or was it, who fell to the yeah. stat? Was it yeah. Leonard fell to the Caps? Jackets is Fantilli. Cap. Was it Fantilli from Michigan? Yeah, for, Fantilli went to Columbus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was the second pick, right? He's good. I like that. Third. Anyways, anyways, Will Smith yeah. is good. He's really <laughs> great. <laughs> that was, you know that what? Was, though, Gabe, <laughs> I'd be shocked if he if he he might uh, he might say I'm good. I'm good. I I, I don't mind uh, staying around next year. I wouldn't want to play for the Sharks for the next five years if I was him. Uh, it's going to be a tough time playing for San Jose. Boston yeah. University have Macklin uh, Celebrini, who's projected to be the number one pick in the NHL draft uh, this and year. They're twenty two. Yeah, they're twenty two and eight team. Yeah, exactly. And uh, defenseman uh, Lane, Lane Hudson as well. Is he the one that was drafted by the Canadians? Yes. He's been unbelievable. Yeah, he was, the next yeah. Kale McCarr. The next yeah, Kale McCarr. The GM, the GM son plays on this team, right? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. See, it's all coming back to me here. I'm not even reading this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's you all know. these kids. You know. How many Will Smiths are there? There's Will Smith on the Dodgers. There's Will Smith that slapped yeah, Chris Will Rock. Smith. Will yeah, Smith, the exactly. hockey player. Cam, I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping up with yeah. Will Smith. Will Smith, <laughs> Medicine Society. Did you, did you hear the... <laughs> Did you hear the debate though around Canada right now? I'm sure, Gabe, you heard about uh, the Canadian team that won the Nationals, right? Here in Canada, like everyone's saying that uh, they, the Canadian national team that won, the University of New Brunswick, can beat, and I believe this, obviously I'm biased, can beat the best team in America. And now there's been all kinds of debates on podcasts, hockey shows. Who oh, is whether better. they could beat one and, of these teams, Boston so, College or Boston University? UN, yeah, UNB, the, the team that won for uh, in Canada, hasn't lost a game since, like, l- late last season. They're 42-0 and the last 42 games, and here's all you have to know about this. Players are obviously older, but here's my easy sell, uh, uh, explanation. During the World Juniors, during the training camps, the All-Stars for Team Canada, this Team Canada team play against the U Sports All-Stars, and they get their asses kicked every single year by the U Sports players. These are grown they men that are a few years older. I remember. Right? But you're uh, right. And they did. You're right, though. The CIS hockey is much better than people realize because all those dudes, they all played, like, junior hockey already. Yes. Like, they've already played big time. Like you said, they, they are a little older. Yeah, It'd be a fun scary. game. I'd like to see it. Yeah. So there were ten the captains thing. this like, year. There were uh, good call on the UN. They would team. murder those kids. Like Gabe, that's the one thing yeah. you know about like old men strength and stuff. You're if you get into like a, a, a like a physical game against these guys, you're dead. Those guys are still kids. I know they're fast, but I'll I'll bet yeah. on men. I'll bet on men on yeah, the, to the coach. It's sort of like UNB. football. It's sort of like football. Sort of like you know, like some yeah, the wide receivers would get open, like you said. Like Will Smith would still be fast and he'd do his thing and stuff, but overall 
they get worn out in the boards and stuff. They get yes. beat up as the game would go on, right? Like they they just would. Um, so North Dakota went um, North Dakota won twenty one games in a row, and then they lost two games in a row to Colorado College. But we know how good North Dakota uh, obviously are. So I talked about Michigan State. These guys are really really good. They got that stud goalie. Uh, they're very good defensively as well. They had a dominant uh, year, 21-8-3, 15-5-2 uh, in the Big Ten. They won the Big Ten championship in overtime against Michigan. But I got to tell you this, you know, they're all good, man. The Denver Pioneers are a badass uh, program. And, guys, the defending champions, Cam, Quinnipiac, they're the defending champs. And like these that. guys are relentless, bro. And they don't get any hype, but um, – how about this? They lead the country in scoring margin. They're third in scoring defense. They're fourth in scoring offense. Like they're a complete team, McInnes. But they don't they don't really get hyped up very much. So you get mm-hmm. the bracket up again here, guys, if you can here. What's your picks, uh, McInnes? How do you think the bracket is going to play out? Who do you got going to the final four? <laughs> So, so the funny thing is, is that I'd like to come in and, and kind of be able to give this crazy underdog, but all year I've been rooting on Boston college. So they got that number one next to them. So I'm not really coming in here with the biggest dark horse pick, but I just like how they're built. I like the goaltending they're built from the back. Good defense, obviously studs all over the ice there. Um, but I do like North Dakota. I mentioned it. I I like the way they play. Um, Like I mentioned, they've got, you know, a lot of guys that play the right way, but not all the stars, not all the prospects, right? Same thing you mentioned about Quinnipiac, right? That's the thing about them every single season. They were successful last year. How many number first round picks? How many second round picks? How many third round picks on Quinnipiac this year? Well, compared to some of those number one seeds, number two, number three, not that many. But we're seeing it right now in NCAA basketball, guys, and you hear the commentators talk about it. I'm curious you guys agree with me on this. The time has gone for Kentucky to continuously have these one-and-done guys playing one year in college basketball, going to the NBA. If you notice, these teams playing well are the the teams with the 24-year-olds out there that are grown men, you know, and that's right now what I'm seeing with NCAA hockey. Some of these teams don't have the first-round picks. Boston University is a younger team. They got younger guys. Like the the Boston College, a little bit more veteran uh, guys that have been there for like this their second year, et cetera. Well, these are the got games. A extension, Marenzi. I, weren't you surprised with that? I'm like, when are they getting rid of this guy, Calipari? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Thirty-three yeah. million dollar buyout. Are, they didn't want like, to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's exactly. got oh, tenure. Yeah, that is thirty-three up, million like, dollars, right? They were like, yeah, give him another year. Yeah, exactly. So, That's a good call. Boston yeah. College plays Michigan Tech. Ooh. No number up for the game. Boston College is going to win this game in advance. They get the winner of Wisconsin and Quinnipiac which I think will be the defending champions. You agree, McKinnis? That's how I think that, yes. like that top of the bracket. Bottom end, Michigan the State are damn game. good. Under five I think and Michigan a half State, Wisconsin, Quinnipiac. Oh, I don't disagree. Michigan State, Western Michigan, I think the Spartans will win. And they'll get the winner of North Dakota and Michigan. It's like kind of a toss-up. I think North Dakota will be small favorites. All those people that had all that extra time because of those COVID seasons is going to be gone, and you're not going to really have the 23, 24, 25-year-old basketball players running around anymore. You're not going to have it. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. The books have so much information. Now, the, the gamblers do as well, but it's coming down to sometimes coaching 
sometimes, you know, a, a good play, a good call. I mean, the block last night that was a block, it was called a foul. Oh, oh my God. My God. That was Dude, all We would ball. see that highlight forever. Yes. And instead, oh, we did, did, got we, robbed. We'll, we'll never see it again. We got, got robbed by a referee making, you know, that's a ref. In. They still covered, though. They did. They did cover. The Bostonian versus the book. I think JMU is going to knock off Wisconsin. I think JMU, with the way that they get scored them and spread you out, Wisconsin struggles to defend. They're in the bottom third in defensive efficiency. Iowa State's not going to beat you with offense necessarily. They're just they're just not. Illinois will beat you with offense. I like Illinois. I don't love them enough to beat you, Kyle. You got to guard at some point. Give me Connecticut to make the Final Four. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning... Or you're rebuilding. In game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back to back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In game live prime time. Back to back just utterly stinker quarters. In game live overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now. You may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Rancy. 3-1 for the uh, Chicago Blackhawks over the Calgary Flames right now. We're going to get McKinnis out in a couple of minutes here. So, McKinnis, you're taking Boston College to win the Frozen Four. I can't argue with the pick. They are a dominant uh, hockey team, but we all know these games are going to be so close throughout this tournament. There's going to be overtimes and a lot of drama. I can't wait to see it play out. But you got Boston College to win, and you've already got your eye on a baseball team total. I love it. What do you got for us? Gabe, last year, my bread and butter was the team totals. You know, to me, baseball, there's so many games. You're betting all summer. You can get screwed by the juice, the vig. Why worry about that? You get the team totals. You're getting a lot of plus money always. Let's start things off with the Baltimore Orioles. Everyone's favorite team, it seems like, going into this year. We'll rock with the team total up and over four and a half runs plus 105. Sandoval on the mound for the LA Angels. Obviously, no more Otani. It's going to be a rough time pitching wise. Starters and bullpen. I got the LA Angels ranked bottom five in my bullpen rankings here. Looking at this uh, team for the Orioles, young but they've got a couple of vets mixed in as well. Last year, closing things out, top five uh, in uh, in uh, uh, hard hit percentage, top five in runs per game, top five in, in pretty much every stat that matters, and they get to play this LA Angels team, give me five runs. I don't want the run line. I don't want the money line. No first half this with Colbert Burns. Just get me to five runs. I'll be happy on opening day. And... Um... I just got to say, actually, looking uh, looking at this, I can't believe we talked about it last night that the Yankees are actually favored to win a division. I buy into what you're talking about, Baltimore. But looking at the board here with the opening day slate, if you get it up, the Baltimore logo is just the best one. It just screams off the the the, the screen, the the screen yeah. <laughs> by far. Oh, I, like it. Bird. Yeah, I like nah, it. It's just that's a great logo. There's yeah, nothing. Like, all these logos are all kind of meh. The Milwaukee one, you know, it's all right. You know what I'm saying? You got the Yankees tradition and stuff like that, the match, but yeah, that Baltimore bird's just awesome. Yeah, you know, he's great. Yeah, he's wearing a hat. What's not the like? Mechanics like the Ottawa Senators. Yes. And tomorrow. tomorrow. Plus one Rangers over. Yeah.